Ahoy there, Legion! Another Warframe video for you all. Devstream 35 went off for the most part without a hitch last week, but there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Corpus Ice Planets are on the way, but we knew that already. Till Rigor is getting reworked, but we knew that already. J3 Golem's fight is finally under construction, but we knew all about that already. Something we didn't know is that the new underwater Grenier tile set is around the corner. Which is good to finally have something new to mention, but it just doesn't compute. Ninjas versus pirates. It's always ninjas versus pirates, and pirates naturally have the advantage when dealing with water. Ninjas don't belong there. And to make it even more odd, the one Warframe that does involve water is actually a pirate, so they knew all about this already. I'm not gonna harp on it. At this point, I see it as the required lava zone in all MMORPGs, so it is what it is. I just think it's weird. Something nifty they did add in what was the official big deal reveal of the night, and it's been hyped for the past couple of weeks, was was Archwings. A lot of people were blown away by this reveal. You might notice that I didn't say I was. It's not that it's bad, it looks cool, and all that, I'll give it that, and I got a link to it in the description in case you didn't see it already, but I got this nagging, realistic thought in the back of my head wondering how often we'll be able to use them, and do they require refueling? Where are the platinum walls to block us out of it? Maybe even some stance mods? I'm interested, but extremely cautious. Oh, sorry, I did forget that they plan on eventually letting players create missions and quests and allowing others to vote on how enjoyable they were. That is something I'll be looking forward to and plan on actually doing in the future. But with all the double affinity boost from the Avalanche Offensive, I need to clear out a whole bunch of weapons I got rotting in the Foundry since forever. So as the title might have given away, here's a short review of the Magistar. It has no inherent polarity slots, and the one hammer stance I've found so far doesn't match it, so it only gives a bonus of four ranks to spend, or 34 at max without any vegetables. Its damage is almost all impact, making it as good to break shielded targets, so go after Corpus to get the most mileage out of it. Here I'm fighting about level 17 mobs during an invasion of some planet. Even with maxed fury, the weapon swings incredibly slowly, and even if it didn't, the damage really isn't there. There is a little room to work on crit or status builds, but the weapon swings are so bloody slow they wouldn't really get far anyway. If you do want to give it an honest try, or just want something to do while leveling it, the best the usage I got out of it was ground slamming constantly. Chase down the ragdoll enemies unfortunate enough to be in the way, and smash them with a nice chunk of finishing damage before they get back up. Some weapons are difficult to get rid of, this is not one of them. It's not the worst weapon in the game, but it's also clearly not the best. I'd go so far to say if you want a challenge to try and use the Magistar when on melee only runs, similarly to driving with an emergency brake on because you're ahead of schedule. For all these reasons, at least as of patch 14.2, this one is easily a rank and spank. Thank you for watching, Legion. If you want to be awesome, like and share this video with your fellow Tenno. We always appreciate it when he does. If you want to be even more awesome, subscribe to stay up to date with Warframe's happenings and join the ever increasingly mighty Legion. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Catch you next time, Legion. Take care.